My name is David Lorimer. I'm the Programme Director of the Scientific and Medical Network, and I direct with Ollie Robinson Beyond the Brain, which is coming up in November. And I've got here my guest, uh, Tim Freak, um, who's uh, going, to, I'm going to ask him uh, two or three questions. And so the first one, uh, Tim, is, was there a single experience in your life that started your inquiry into whether consciousness might extend um, beyond the brain? Well, I, I, had, I had spiritual awakenings from a very young age, so I guess I'd always thought it was beyond the brain because that's what I was exploring. But a key moment that I came to mind with that question, which made me question the scientific mainstream, was when I was at university studying philosophy, but also doing a psychology I went to a tiny little gathering with the head of the psychology department, Dr. Ivor Pladel Pierce. And he, this is so, this is the early 80s, I was in my early 20s. And he said, um, he, he, he'd just come back from a meeting with all the top guys in the neuroscience world at the time. And they'd just been shown the data of a young man who had a high IQ and a maths degree who didn't have a brain, in, to all effects. Yeah. And it came out eventually in, in the Lancet, is your brain really necessary as a, a, a whole thing? And for me, as a young guy who already thought that the, that, that wasn't quite right, I was just like, what the hell's this? And I remember distinctly going up to him afterwards and going, Ivor, what, what, what does this mean? And he looked at me and he went, it means everything we've been telling you is wrong. Ah. And that really stuck with me over the years. And uh, that was, so yeah, that's a big resonance for me. Yes, indeed. And, and if someone coming new to the subject, um, what sort of advice would you, you give them in terms of uh, researching this? Well, I can't, I, you know, it's such a big area, I can't speak for the area, <laughs> but I, certainly in terms of what I'm going to be co contributing, I'm, as, a, uh, as a good intro to the approach that I, that I have to it, I would suggest that people check out my TEDx talk um, from Berkeley TEDx, um, Are We... Uh, clever monkeys or immortal souls and that captures a lot of the, the 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 ideas that i want to explore about the nature of consciousness well i, I will will put that link in so so that really summarizes um what you're going to be contributing uh, to the um, the meeting would you like to say a few more words about that well, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, what that does is, you know, I'm interested in bringing science and spirituality together. And I think the key to it is this incredible idea we've had for 100 years now that the universe isn't a thing, it's a process. And that is a process of evolution and emergence, which has got us from hydrogen 14 billion years ago to you and me having this conversation. And I think that's the key to want to uh, bring in science and spirituality together. But most people that I see doing this and including myself in the past, put consciousness as a thing, which is a, a, the holder of this. It's, the, it's, the, it's all existing in consciousness. And people do it because I think it enables them to uh, understand um, psi phenomena or, or life after death, NDEs, synchronicities. It, it, the dreamlike nature of life becomes easier to understand. I've come to doubt that. Uh, I still want to explain all those things, but I don't think that consciousness is the grand. I think consciousness is an emergent phenomena and because that's a big shift for me um, and I think it will be of interest to a lot of people working in this area, I thought I would concentrate on why I was wrong about consciousness. Terrific, Tim. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you very much indeed. And we're looking forward to seeing all you people who are looking at the video uh, online for our meeting in November. Thank you.